Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. Um, so I had a bunch of people comment that they would like to know how to fix uh, iMac G3 DVD drives. And now this is weird to me, but this only works like 80% of the time for me. Sometimes it just doesn't work. And I'll try it again and it just still won't work. And I have no idea. I have no idea why it's like that. But 80% of the time it works works on all of the iMacs in there, it works on this one, it does not work on my flower power, and it worked on my Dalmatian. I don't know why. Um, I think maybe it's the motors are worn out, and I, I don't really know. And I mean, every DVD drive that needs to be fixed is slightly different, so I always, well, I, I don't always, I try to do a combination of both. You can take them apart and then connect them up to your iMac while it, and then turn it on to try to figure out which part's failing, which is what I'll sometimes do. Um, doesn't really matter. I have three DVD drives in my pile over there, or CD, I don't know. And I'll uh, do it on one of those ones. But really quickly, before we get into how to do it, I'm going to show how well it works. So. This iMac, it was like you put a disc in, you gotta like tilt the computer up and like shake it to get the disc to come out. Or, this one I might not even, I'm trying to remember, this one might have been one where you actually have to like take it, the CD drive apart to get the disc out, which is not great. Okay, so I'm going to grab just some sort of disc. I have no idea what this is and it might not even have anything on it, but are you ready? Um, <laughs> okay, it was a fluke, it was a fluke, I swear, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <sighs> this disk drive was just always loud. You see that? That's pretty good. Okay, so, um, there you go, you can see, I'll just show it again in case you don't. That goes in super easily. And again, stupid loud DVD drive. Uh, DVD? CD? I don't remember. Anyways, um, so yeah, you can see how well that works, obviously. Um, so let's get right into how to fix it. I originally found out how to do this um, using um, my graphite 600 megahertz, which I no longer own. Um, it uh, just had a really sluggish c CD drive, and I was thinking to myself, like, there's got to be a way to fix these. Because I can hear the motor, I know it's working, so it's either got not enough grip to pull a disc or something slipping. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to take the time to figure out how to fix this, and I ended up getting it fixed, and... I don't remember if I ever shipped it out, but I meant to take that drive out and ship it to someone, and then I was like, wow, I should probably make a video on this. No, I never did. That was actually two years ago, I think. A year ago? Two years? I don't know. Anyways, um, so now I've done it to all my computers, as I just said, but yet again, it doesn't work on all of them. So, um, this is not that complicated to remove from your computer. Uh, I'm not going to make a video on how to do it in this video. If you want to know, I have a video, I have two videos on how to take the computer apart to get at this. Um, I'd say that uh, yeah, I have a 2017 version of the, the video of how to take it apart and a 2020 version, I think. Um, so yeah, what you want to do is you don't have to undo these two screws, but there's a screw there, which someone's drilled out not me, and a screw there, which is just not there. Uh, and then once you have those two out, you can just slide the cover off, which I will do now. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain how this kind of works. So you've got a motor here, and this motor spins this gear, which spins this belt. So on certain drives, it might be this belt that's slipping because it's worn and really stretched, and it just isn't gripping either on this gear anymore or the end gear here.
Uh, in this case, I don't believe that this is the problem for this dry. Uh, but it, again, it's kind of hard to tell, which is why you kind of want to replace both when you do go to do this. Um, so this drive someone else has tried to work on, as you can tell by the drilled out screw. Um, so there's normally a spring right here, right there, which is connected down there. And there's a spring on the other side, right there. So all you gotta do is I unhook it from the top um, and then let it hang down at the bottom, just sitting right down there. And then you can push this down kind of, flip this up, take it off, set it to the side. Okay, so this is the other thing that can cause problems, which is this rubber roller right here, okay? So sometimes the rubber roller um, um, is covered in dust and it's, uh, it, it just doesn't grip the CD and it just doesn't allow the CD to get pushed out. So that's not the problem in this case because I can feel it's pretty sticky. Well, not sticky, but like, it grips pretty well, but as you can see, I'm spinning this with my hand and the belt and gear right there is not moving. It's because this now has space in between the metal rod that goes from here to here. So what you can do is either um, get some sort of really thin wire. What I do is I take a twist tie from something, like a little paper or plastic twist tie, cut it apart and take the little wire from it. And I cut in right there, not cut in, but like do this and shove that in here and do the same thing on this side. Because what that does is it'll uh, make the rubber stretch and then it'll make contact on this whole rod. And then when you have contact on the full rod, it's then that rubber is touching the rod in here, which allows it to have grip, which then allows this belt to move and spin that rubber, which you can see right now, if I spin this belt back and forth, that's not moving. So another way that kind of helps this, which also I've done this before too, this is like a last resort kind of thing though, what I'd recommend is you can replace these with elastics. If you find certain size elastics, that'll work pretty well. I've had good success with that. Um, and this usually works by just shoving a twist tie uh, piece of metal under here. But if that still doesn't work and you don't really care about the DVD drive and you just want to try to get it to work, what you can try to do is bend where this touches the bottom, right? along there and all the areas just up slightly because what that'll do is it'll allow these rubber rollers to lift up slightly and you don't want to do it a lot just a little bit because when this lifts up slightly it then has more force touching the cd which then has more force on the rod so then there's more force pushing the rubber onto the rod which then will sometimes allow it to move so that is pretty much um, all you can do to try to fix your drive. And like I said, this only works like 80% of the time. I have no idea why. I think that some, I don't even know. It's super weird to me. Um, I've done it twice on the drive on in, in my flower power. And uh, yeah, it, it's not worked every time. So I, I don't really know why. It's really weird. Um, and I've just never bothered to do it with a different drive and swap it in. So, uh, yeah, then just to assemble... Look, this drive's even broken. This is not even... But, anyways, uh, so yeah, that's how you can fix your drive. I really hope that this helps you and does work for you. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know, and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Any suggestions for another video, let me know. Uh, subscribe and leave a like if you found this useful, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll catch you in the next one.